Hi, thanks for dropping by. In this video, I'm making a Mark II version of the Radio Control Tamiya Mini 4WD car. Here's the first version I've made and to be honest, it turned out really well for the first attempt. However, there are a few issues. First of all, I'm using this budget mini radio system which is kind of cute and it fits nicely into the pocket. The drawback of such a cheap radio controller is it doesn't have sub trims, so you can't trim the center of the steering. Anyway, I got the steering pretty well centered mechanically, but a few crashes will knock it out of its center quite easily, so having sub trim on the controller would be useful. The second issue is with throttle control. Well, this basic car you see here does the job well and it could handle motor's current up to 5 amp. The only complaint I have is the sensitivity. A slight push on the throttle could make a difference between zero throttle and full throttle. It would be nice to have more resolution or throttle steps, if that makes sense. The workaround to this problem is to use a better radio controller which supports throttle curve or throttle endpoints adjustment that will enable us to spread the throttle's response over more travel of the throttle stick. Here's the solution, a spectrum receiver. This little guy will talk to a professional spectrum radio controller like my DX7 here. This is a 7 channel radio controller. We are going to use only 2 channels for radio control of the Tamiya car, but this is the only spectrum radio I have and I will use it. In this shot, you can see how I've wired up all the electronics for the Mark II build of the RC Tamiya car. The key difference from the previous build is this component here. It's a step up regulator and it steps up the 4.2 volts to 5 volts in order to run the spectrum receiver. And speaking of the spectrum receiver, you notice that this is the different one. This is AR6300 spectrum receiver. I mentioned that I wanted to use this micro spectrum receiver, but I just damaged it due to over voltage. The reason is I did not realize this step up regulator is outputting 12 volts DC by default and I need to desolder two solder taps in order to make it output 5 volts. So be careful before you run any regulator or step up, make sure you test output voltage. The ESC is still the same ESC from before and likewise for the servo. And these are the motor wires, I just hook it up to the motor of this car for testing. And now let me show you that everything is working. Here is the new VS chassis which I'm going to use for the Mark II build. This is the Tamiya Blazing Max. Alright, I will do the ROC conversion and we'll be right back. Ta-da! It's done and this is Mark II with the Avante 2001 Black Special body shell. This body shell here is very expensive and I was lucky to get it at 20 bucks from a local seller. I'll post a link to the video description below on how to do the RRC conversion step by step. So do check out the video link below. And by the way, there's a clone of the Avante Black Special 2001 selling online. I got one of Curiosity and it comes with a nice package box like this. Inside there's a bubble wrap and in the bubble wrap is this box here. It looks pretty much like the original but as you can see here the brand here is the RZ brand. There's an R and a Z. And Avante has been replaced by the Chinese characters here. And in the box the wheels look real like the original. But the body shell is opaque, it's not translucent or smoky black, it's opaque black. So that's rather disappointing. The rest of the parts are pretty much similar. And the other disappointment you'll find would be the decals. Look at these decals, they don't look original. Nothing like the box art over here. So I guess that's what you're getting for what you paid for. Now to match the orange wheels in front, which are part of the Tamiya steering set, let's replace the rear wheels with orange ones as well. 
while I was trying to look for this white tire, one way orange wheels, I decided to look for some of the other vintage parts as well. And here I have the stabilizing poles, which should be running two stacks of clear rollers. I've only got four clear rollers here, as you can see. Hence, I got a bunch of this lightweight high mount roller set. So there should be enough clear rollers to form up the two columns for the stabilizing poles. I also found this very rare vintage part here. This is part number 15027. This part is also found in the vintage volume 2 tune-up set and it snaps onto the rear of the car like so. Wow, it's so satisfying to do that. And this is how the car turns out. Two columns of clear rollers, the high mount set, the transparent bumper in front, and the one-way orange wheels with white tires. I'm really happy with this build. Let's take it for the spin outside. Well, that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoy the content and see you next time.